Geoloon just hangs off of the eastern horizon, indicating morning or dawn on hearth. Underneath Eftoki lay rocky bogs where a basilisk known as the Matriarch once inhabited. Now that the Matriarch has been felled by our PCs, the caravan route is safe for those traveling out of Eftoki heading southward and then eastward, which is what our party is planning on doing. We join them as they pack up just after they pack up and are boarding onto several wagons with several prisoners from Stormford in tow, as well as a large handful of traders from Eftoki. A large caravan, lots of numbers, on some dangerous roads outside of the kingdom of Evervale. caravan starts rocking large thick tapestries of silvered scale drape over the goods heading southward there are times where you can find your ways nestled into uh, various compartments on the caravan as you make your way south So we are with the rest of the crew, yes? We're in a convoy. Mm-hmm, yes. Okay. Nobody was left behind. Nobody was left behind. There is a few that were, uh, that had gone with and stayed with the longbow after, uh, mm. after oh. a note left by Ty. I was going to ask, what did we do with the boat? Yeah, okay. The extra boat? Ah, uh, yes. That will be going with Lorcan and those who are splitting off to head back toward Evervale. Or okay. at least back toward in that direction. So Captain Botox is staying on the longbow in Aftoki? Captain, Captain Longbow Captain Buttox with the longbow is going to be taken with Lorcan, and they are going to take their two ships and okay. head eastern eastward as you take a slew of prisoners south. Okay, and, uh, sorry, mm, do okay. we know where east are they going? They have not mentioned. Okay. Uh, all right. So, who is on the caravan with me? We're split in two, yes? There are three caravan uh, wagons, so they're about like 15 feet each. They're 15 feet long. Uh, and there is also two horses each. And uh, you can be in whichever configuration you'd all like to be on. Um, there are some times where people are uh, walking. There's just, there's like, I think, I think I have 12 or so prisoners are with you. Let me see what I have here. Uh, I have 12 or so prison... Where the hell are my notes? Classic. Uh, we have 12 prisoners, uh, from, uh, Stormford, so some of the, um, the liberated prisoners. We also have six of Toki orcs that are going to be, uh, manning a bunch of... There's two on each wagon, uh, and then there's going to be, of course, the four of you as you make your way... Uh, onto the, the caravan here. Okay. Of course, Brother Sykes is with you as well. I'm trying to think of anybody else, any other NPCs that you have ha you have tailing the, with you. Uh, Lorkin and uh, Red Devon and Captain Buttocks have taken the other boats back toward whatever they're heading toward, but away from Eftoki. Right. And how big is each a caravan? 
There are these carts. These carts, yeah. These wagons are about 15 feet. Mm, okay. And are they covered? Or are they open? Uh, there is some covering, but it's like partial covering. It's not. It's not like they have some leather tarps. Yeah, they on. have some like uh, silvered okay. uh, scaled tarps from you would presume from the basilisk that are all stitched together. Uh, that would, of course, act as some sort of tarp or some sort of soft covering. Mm. But uh, they seem to be in pretty good spirits uh, as they. Uh, haven't been able to make any sort of trade southward for a while. Uh, they do speak, um, or at least uh, um, uh, you did hear that they were going to try to head towards Agershaw, and then, of course, they're going to try to go uh, west as well. But they do know that you and your the numbers that they have with you uh, do want to go uh, east. Sorry. So they will make their way east toward Blue Falls, and probably their last stop is going to be Trader's Reach. Okay. Who is who is riding this caravan with us right now? Are we riding the caravan? Are, are we driving? You are not or... driving. You are just riding. There are several. Okay. Um, you are taking turns from some of these. Uh, liberated prisoners are, are walking out the side of this caravan, as well as uh, you probably swapping every once in a while with trading and, and walking as, as they do. Uh, Brother Sykes, though, has not stepped to walk. He's usually is uh, sitting on the, the cart this whole time. Uh, the two, uh, there's two orcs, each from Avtoki, who are manning the carts. I'm on the outside, and I'm walking along with the cart then. All right. I'm sitting on the front one, but I have the Crow Pro set up on the back one, looking backwards. Okay. God, I forgot about the Crow Pro. And I've threatened everyone not to touch it. Okay. All right. I love that thing. Ty is periodically throwing up from the horrific, <laughs> yeah. mind-wrenching sensation of looking forward and behind himself at all times. <laughs> uh-huh. Time he blinks, it's, a, it's like a... a sp- Flash of the the rear view camera. That's just it, it, I'm completely fine. That's just anxiety and depression. Oh yeah, there's. there's you, it's exactly. It's, if you play VR, you get used to it, I guess. Exactly. Exactly. I think so, I've been uh, very quiet this morning though since we left. Okay. <laughs> I I asked the driver of the of the one I'm on. I'm in the front with Ty. I ask if there are any more basilisks around. Should, is it safe to be looking around the way we are or no? I think we're like out of basilisk territory. Right? Yeah, you are heading out of basilisk territory, of course. Um, okay. You are, um, sure. yeah, there is, as like, I think you, I think there is a moment where you ask the the driver, he turns and, Rossibrat. and you're not quite sure if you can, Translate orc, um, but I think Varsha then chimes in and says, I think we're out of Right. Okay. In that case, I'm not so weary to look out and look around my surroundings. Yeah, as you pass through, the uh, the morning starts to uh, give way to a, a bluish-white light as the sun, or I'm sorry, as Geolune uh, crests over the eastern uh, horizon. And... Uh, you start to hear uh, the birds and wildlife of a changing environment between this boggy, rocky landscape as you head southward. Have any of you made it this far south before? At least this far out of I have not. Kingdom. I also have not. I have never ventured this far from the Empire before. There's nothing out here for me. I just want to kill the God King. Mm-hmm. Same girl, same. Okay. So a couple of hours go by. Pretty uneventful, as you do. Um, can I give one of you roll me a D6? I'll do it. Five. Okay. As you make your way toward 
the uh, upward or an intersection up ahead. Uh, there are several, I have this, I have moving this, this, uh, fl this feather freely here, but it is actually uh, a couple of days, every one of these hexes a, a day. So um, I should probably stop moving it so freely. But uh, as you start moving ahead and a couple hours go by, uh, you do see up ahead, there is what looks like to be uh, a band of humanoids. Uh, at first, uh, Ty, uh, at first you see that there are only four as you make your way a bit closer. How big do they look? Six feet or so at the at average. Are they armed? Are their weapons drawn? Uh, they do have they do have weapons, but they are not drawn. Okay. Uh, and I'm sorry, they these these people were in our way up ahead. Up ahead, they're not in your way, but they are up uh, up ahead. It looks like they are uh, stopping for a moment. And at least they see you as your caravan starts to wheel by. As you get closer, it looks like they sort of nod at you as you all pass. And then several of them, they look to be elves now as you get closer. Their angled features, their long hair that flows under some of their hats and helmets. Um, and uh, you do notice as they turn their head and look and then start to talk to each other that they do have these pointed ears. And they look and it seems as if they are surveying the, ca the caravan and questioning the company on this Envoy. Um, I know I'm not, but is Smith still wearing, like, the very clear sworn armor? Or are you in disguise? I don't imagine that I would be, uh, yeah. in disguise. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just thought I'd I, check. I don't see Mr. I... Smith. Uh, which, which caravan is he in? He's walking beside our caravan, okay. I think. All right. Yeah. Uh, is this a new day? Uh, this is a new day, yes. Okay, so may I roll uh, for my uh, daily potions? Of course you can. Experimental potions. Okay. One and three. Uh, that would be... If my brain wants to walk... Uh, healing and resilience. Nice. Yeah, one is healing. Yeah. Nice. So, caravan wheels by. They speak to each other in a... Does anyone speak Elvish? I speak Gonda, come on. Might, actually. Let me just look. Uh-huh. I do. Oh All my. Right. Make me a perception. Um, okay. I am going to say, please keep this in consideration that I don't think I would be fluent. I think I probably understand battle commands. So, okay. because that's probably what they would teach us. Okay. Um, I definitely wouldn't probably understand most conversational stuff. I don't think. Um, All right. Sorry, what did you want me to roll? Perception. Right, okay. Thirteen. Um, I guess it would be more of an insight. What's your insight? We'll just add it on to this. Uh, ooh. Roll that for you. Okay. Um, so, well, it would be a 17. Four. Because of the so it would add four, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, I think you see, as they start, start to turn and talk to each other, 
Um, you can't quite pick up any of the words that they're using, um, but you do pick up with their, their mannerisms and their body language that they are definitely interested, um, and they also seem disappointed. They're interested in the caravan, but they're disappointed at either its company or Interesting. either its cargo. But they seem to sort of like, it's almost as if you get the feeling that a group of bandits are watching a, a huge fish go by, right? They're like, this is too big for us to snag. And um, it's almost like that sort of feeling where you're like, okay. oh, well, ha ha. Uh, we're, we're too big of numbers for you to be, to, to take. Uh, so I think that's sort of what, what you're getting off of that as they sort okay. of, as you pass by. But this is a, uh, a realization as this sort of interaction happens and a reminder that you are not in Evervale. You are not in the kingdom anymore. Um, yes, you are still on the spine, but out here it's hard to say who is the ruler if not Karen Tier? And you all know very little about Karen Tier and the Elvish Empire that is just right. to the southwest. By the way, I'm staring at all of them. If any of them make eye contact with me, I do that thing where you just stare back at them, stone faced. I'm doing the exact same thing outside. Yeah, okay. I think, uh, make me intimidations, both of you. Nineteen. Okay. Eighteen. Yeah, so the both of you, uh, as you sort of make your way, there are, uh, several who have, uh, their hand just, like, resting on, uh, a quiver that is at their waist or at their, the lower back. Uh, and as it's just sort of resting there, almost like a like a power move, like don't try anything sort of thing. Um, they look over and catch eyes with you, Smith, and you staring. They start to flick their eyes away from their target being you as uh, it is just too much for them to bear. And the same tie goes with you as one looks back, I think toward the front of the vessel or towards the, the front of the caravan and you're probably, your head is probably craned around, staring right back. Um, and yeah, as they sort of, once again, try to survey what they can, they turn to, to each other. And then as the caravan slowly passes by, so do the elves. Uh, uh. I close my eyes. I'm now watching out of the crow pro. Okay. What they do? Yeah, as you're uh, as you look outside of the the crow pro and you look out the back, um, not much has changed. A lot of them. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, a lot of them start to then look at. Uh, so weird internet thing. My gaming computer now is the one that is a little weird, and my streaming one's fine. So we may get some weird hiccups. There can be only one. I know, apparently. Apparently that's what's going on. So uh, let me know if anything weird just happened besides that, but sometimes it spikes for a second. So anyway, um, as you look out of the back of the, the Crow Pro, right, toward the, in the distance, you do see that uh, not much changes. They sort of talk to each other and they're all, I think all four of them at least start to stare. And then uh, over some time, two others come out of the bushes and they start to then report and start to chat to each other. But at this point, they are just figures in the distance. I yeah. talked to Ty. I, okay. I, I, yes? Oh, you said, you, said, you said my name. And I think I lost clean feed. Perfect. I did. One second, everyone. One second. Hello? I was okay. going right. to ask if you knew what they were or who they were. 
What did it look like? It was elves. Okay. But, uh, elves. <laughs> Don't they come from that island to the west? Why are shit. they inland? I don't know. They're brigands. They're on the fucking road. They're robbing people. Okay. So there's likely to be more than four in that case. They must be accompanied yeah, more by. In the bush. Yeah, probably. There's too many of us. Okay. They're probably at one wagon, but three. All of us on it. Probably not worth their time. Right. Hopefully. It ain't worth their time. Damn, I, I, I think the players will have to help me out here, but I seem to recall after the Basilisk encounter, we collected some magical items, yes? Yes. Yes, you okay. did. Do the, pl- do the players who collected them remember what they got? Uh, yes, I got a, a cloak, but I don't know what it does. Okay, there was also something we inside the pocket of the cloak, yes? Mm-hmm. Yes, that's right. Okay. All right. Just so I remember, because I haven't identified those for you. Hey. Would you like to do that now? I, I would like to once we have time. We're still in a caravan, and I, I don't know where Vasha is, if she's on my caravan or not. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'd say that I am. Okay. All right. Uh, did anybody else have anything uh, just while I'm getting my things together? I, I, I don't recall. I don't remember. There was a ribbon, but I don't think it's magical. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, in that case, let me see. Let me think. Let me think. Uh, all right. I understand. So uh, you said you had this cloak, yes? Ms. Yes. Vasha? Yeah. Um, all right. If, if you would like, I can look into it for you to see if maybe perhaps it uh, I can do something with it. Or if it's useful for you. I nod. Sure. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, (laughs) Don't thank me yet. So I reach into my uh, alchemist kit and I I get uh, six or so sticks. They look rather, you know, wild. You know, not uh, hewn or anything. And I form them into a frame. Yes, like a rectangular frame. And I take... The uh, a vellum scroll from my inventory as well, and I affix it to it so it looks like a, almost like a parchment frame. And then I take the cloak, and then I affix it to the frame on the other side using more sticks, and I bind them together. So on one side it's the vellum, on the other side it's the you know it's it's the cloak. I'm. I'm then going to get what looks like a bar of soap, but nothing comes off when I rub it on it. It looks like soap to you, but maybe perhaps it's not it's something else. And I'm going to rub it on the vellum side of the uh, of this contraption I have made. I'm and you know, a lot you know, like silk screening, right? Yes, yes. That's sort of what's like, happening here. That sort of process, like a mixture of silk screening and maybe even you know, like how you make rubbings on trees, you mm-hmm. know, with charcoal. Yeah. Like that. And that's where the uh, this block comes in as I rub the, uh, the vellum. And as I do, you kind of see what looks like runes, but it doesn't make any sense for just, you know, like a skin scroll to just have runes on it or whatever. But something shows up and it looks like perhaps I can make out what, what it is. There's a little bit of, uh, you know... Uh, what looks like spell wind or some kind of gas emanates from the scroll. And uh, I've cast a ritual of identification on the uh, on the cloak. Okay. Um hmm. trying to figure out how I want to give this to you. Go ahead and roll me a D18. Okay. A D18.
if my keyboard works. Yeah, this is actually going to be really weird. Ask me, or um, uh, roll me 18 D18s. 18 D18s. Yep. Okay, I'm going to do you one one less and roll okay. you 17, because I've rolled one already. Okay. This is going to be really weird. But this so is going to be fun for you, I hope. So 17 D18s. Okay. Okay. All right. So 186 is the full number. Perfect. That's not what I need, but thank you. Otherwise, all right, so... you have all these individual numbers there. Jet gains that much HP permanently. Yeah, that's it. And I grow in size to match. <laughs> uh, if take, 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 take your time for a second. Um, is anyone else doing anything during this while I try to make a small puzzle? What a small puzzle. Um, I think I am. I am just paying attention to how he does this. I think I would normally be watching him. Sorry. Damn it, PB, fill the time. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I could ask him how he's doing. I am sitting in almost silence this morning. So I'm also just watching him and everything around me. Hmm? I think, if anything, um, I've just been... um, Keeping a peripheral eye on the elves. Um, but beyond that, I'm just staying very vigilant outside. I feel like that's the thing that I can do to contribute right now. Wonderful. Okay, so as you are... Looking at these runes, these markings. Mm-hmm. Gosh, it's making this a puzzle for me to do. Uh, they start to display in a random order. Okay. That is not unlike you have seen before when you identify things like this. But there are several translations as you like sort of go through your notes you start to you start to see uh, and start to put together and decipher what it is that is being displayed in front of you Okay. Just give me a second, I'm sorry. All right. Um, give me one second. Uh, okay. Whatever this is, is a very diff- very, uh, novel, Miss Vasha. But, uh, I'm sure I can make some sort of, uh, shape of it. Th- th- there was something else, wasn't there, if I recall correctly? Uh, it's in it, the pocket. And I'll pull in it out. Pocket. Yep. Okay. All or right. I'll point so, to it rather since you've got it. I don't want to touch right. it. Yeah. Right. We can we can do that later. I think um, I think I'd uh, walk up to one of the other uh, orcs. Do do uh, did any of them that have joined us on this trip? Uh, do any of them speak common? Would I know that? I mean, I've gone around town now a few times. Yeah, I, um, make me... Uh, yes, there is one that speaks broken, broken common. Okay. I think I'd approach them, um, maybe 
a few minutes after we pass those elves. And, uh, I walk up and I say, Did you know those elves? You seen them before? I've seen uh, many elves before. Those elves, though. No. Do you know them? No, I do not know them. Should I... we be worried? Uh, no, I think we're... I think we're all right. We have many number. There is nothing to worry about for us. But... Uh, nah, I don't think so. As he sort of takes a moment to think, um, you do read no, like, uh, insight required or anything, but you do see uh, that he does genuinely believe that there's really nothing to worry about. Um, I think what could have been is... Uh, highway bandit robber who uh, tried to take uh, I understand yeah but uh, too many of us mm. but uh, also they were not wearing um current 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 the uh, color or tabard. Yes. So most right. likely bandits. Likely. Yeah. All right. Have you fought with them before? Oh, no. The current uh, the elves from the south. Really, uh, uh, not bad. Uh, good in trade. Uh, several arms and weapons, but, uh, of course, if you uh, dressing like you are, are a part of... Uh, points to your armor for a second. Uh, in the other kingdom, it could be a bit of... Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, rude. It can be rude for them. Like uh, some statement. Like a challenge or something, you know? Yeah. At least that's how we are. If you walk into a, you have talkie wearing uh, uh, enemies uh, or uh, 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 color or uh, tablet, we're going to fight. We're going to be mad, huh? Yeah. All right. Are you uh, uh, with, the, uh, with the Empire, or really? No. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, the markings don't come off my armor. I can, um, I can... I can make my armor do a lot of things, but, um... Hiding the marking... I can only do it so often. You make it yours, armor. <sighs> Some of it. A gift? I wouldn't call it a gift. Ooh. But I think its intent was to be a gift. Sort of nods in agreement. This see how it of a you carry it a memorial like um, of the dead, like a fallen brother or sister or a looted from enemy. Spoils of war. <laughs> it might be all of those things, and it might be none of them. I'm sorry if that doesn't make a lot of sense, but... 
I don't have a better way to explain it. Rocky. As he sort of nods in agreement and turns uh, back toward the road. <laughs> he starts talking orcish to the... You could tell he's sort of talking orcish to the horses as the horses start to pick up pace a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, a small rocking motion uh, almost knocks you off of uh, balance, but you're able to, of course, uh, adjust and remedy that. Yeah. Well, I'm outside walking on the... Uh, oh, yes, that's true. Walking yeah. next to the so caravan. probably walking next to him as he's... Yeah. As he's yeah, yeah, I think um, he may then uh, talk to the, the horses and they move a little bit. And it's just like one or two mile an hour quicker than your speed just to like get out of the awkward conversation sort of thing, you know? Yeah. And then I, um, then I suppose that I would return to uh, just kind of keeping an eye out. Yeah. It's probably obvious to anyone that knows me or... Anyone in the group that I am purposefully staying away from the caravan? Mm hmm. I think um, as you are making your way towards the outskirts or toward the, um, as you're sort of off the, the beaten path here, Smith, uh, your feet do catch on a lot of hewn stone. Um, not statues like, or, 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 um, or a mason in a way like they were. Uh, like the basilisk yards or the swamps that were of the basilisk den, but you do start to see like old some cobbles or cobbles something. and uh, some squared cubed bricks. Some of them in some sort of new uh, uh, polyhedral type uh, shapes as you sort of make your way through. Uh, they do remind you a lot of um, the old dwarven architecture that is just sort of scattered throughout here. Another reminder uh, that you live post-sundering of, of hearth. And uh, it's not uncommon. Uh, usually, uh, when you do see uh, this sort of architecture, in the kingdom at least, it's usually repurposed uh, into different buildings and things like that. But out here in the wilderness, uh, there, are, um, there are just like old forgotten scraps of just architecture. Um, some are sunken into some of the bogs nearby. Uh, some are just off of the trail. Uh, there are some uh, broken uh, archways just off the trail, maybe toward the wood a bit, that you could see a, someone had made a camp near or an unfortunate hunter uh, would make a camp near that is no uh, more. But there is still maybe a tarp or something that signifies that it was once a dwelling for someone. Uh, but not much... Uh, besides this reminder of an old age, as you sort of trod back to the Empire. What's going through your mind, Smith, as you sort of make your way through back to the kingdom? As back to the, it's not necessarily near there yet, but of course, what's going through your mind as you make this journey? I'm doing the thing where I'm trying to keep my mind occupied mm. with other things. I know a little bit about some of the dwarven architecture. I speak dwarven. Mm. And um, it's maybe one of those random hobbies that I think I might have. One of mm. the things that I think I'm curious about and might help in some way strategically here and there so it's one of those things that i'm keeping an eye out for this these bits of dwarven architecture anything that might stand out mm. anything that um I'm, i feel like i'm always trying to put a puzzle together in my head and i'm not quite sure what that puzzle is and i feel like we've been talking about these different sites and dwarven architecture and the sundering and I'm always a little bit curious about everything and I owe oh, my in the periphery of my mind I feel like there's some kind of connection so I'm probably always a little bit 
in my own head thinking about things wandering into that space mm -hmm. and thinking about all that yeah. and, and then alert and everything but then you start to find your way solving some sort of puzzle that you are unsure of mm -hmm. okay so i think that there's a lot of questions that crop up repeatedly a lot of wondering if the dwarves and their technology are related to the sites did their technology break the world did did they enter into some sort of I feel like they they made many choices that maybe they had many opportunities to change the direction that things went in, and they didn't. And I'm wondering if we can learn anything from these remnants, these ruins. Those are the typical thoughts that I would have. Okay. It's good to know. I think as you are making your way and you start to trip over and start to look and you're starting to, in your subconscious, start to figure out this, or at least try to figure out and think about this puzzle that's sort of happening in the periphery as you, of course, you're, uh, are thinking, of course, about the Empire, the God King and things, and protecting your friends and being a security detail, but of course your subconscious is still working this puzzle. Uh, you do start to pick up various uh, scriptures and things on various ruins that are, ruins, <clears throat> excuse me, ruins that are passing by. And uh, it does seem like there is some sort of, at least, holy site, or at least the bricks and rubble from what you have um, discerned, you are trotting in a holy area, um, this region. Um, some of uh, the marble that has been hewn uh, in some places that doesn't look like marble to the untrained eye, but uh, because it's been so uh, covered with ground cover and stained by mud and things like that. But you're able to, I think, as you trip and you, with your iron boots, are able to scuff and scratch the surface of it, noticing that it is marble. And knowing, I think, a little bit about some of the dwarven architecture and maybe some dwarven culture, you know that marble is used a lot uh, in uh, holy temples and things like that as well. Uh -huh. uh, so that indicates some sort of... Well, when I say holy, I mean some sort of, uh, like a place of... Uh, death and spirit. So uh, this could be some sort of site or grave site, or at least some sort of burial um, region, where whether or not you are standing on where the temple used to be, or it's uh, three miles that way, but you've noticed through the past couple of miles and couple of hours bits of this rubble nearby, as almost if, as almost if um, the building somewhere has exploded outward and just rubble and shrapnel is near. And you are picking up on that sort of, those sort of clues as you make your way. DM? Yes. The cloak Please. that I am identifying. Of course. What color is it? It is. is the cloth. Uh, it, the inside of it seems to be like a deep-ish green satin. Uh, okay. And the outside is a red quilted cloak. Um, right. I and, think I have it. Okay. And what... And oh, sorry. You, you, you're explaining it still. Yeah. yeah. And, and there's... Um, uh, inside, uh, there are... Uh, inside that there seems to be these uh, long, ropey um, drawstrings that are around, usually that go around like the hood or so. Uh, and then there are the bristles of the rope seem to be uh, gnarled and uh, briar-like thorns, if you will. And... Uh, they what are what a bit color stiff. are the uh, are the drawstrings? Uh, a black rope. Okay, all right. So with the words you gave me, I've come up with four words. Uh, one using all of the letters you gave me, and then three 
Okay. So the three let the three words I had were mist lined cape, because I guess because of that teal inlay. But okay. then the full word is displacement. So I don't know. I'm I'm coming up with mist lined cape of displacement right now. Uh, go ahead and take inspiration. And yes, Holy this shit. is a cloak of displacement. Fuck. Okay. We'll copy this and put it in the chat. So yes, you have figured that it out. That was it is, amazing. Is, there you go. So, uh, I, I remove the cloak from the uh, apparatus and I hand it over to Vasha and I say, uh, this is, uh, how best to put it, a cloak of displacement. And um, in a second, the DM will tell me what it does, <laughs> so I can tell you. I was going to say, what does uh -huh. that do? <laughs> While you're wearing the cloak, it projects an illusion that makes you appear to be standing in a place near your actual location. No, stop. So when you wear this cloak, you can project an illusion. I think that will allow you to appear like you are near to where you actually were. By how many feet, DM? Uh, just in a immediate, uh, I think it's yeah, just an immediate uh, place. So you could be within five feet of where it was. I think mechanically things have disadvantage toward hitting you. I see. Oh so, my lord! Okay. This so will like, come when handy. something attacks you, it, it projects an illusion that where they think they're attacking is just not you. Much like a displacer beast would. Wow. Okay. There you go. <laughs> and I give oh, it to her. Uh, thank you. I glance over to Ty and consider if it would be more advantageous for Ty to wear it uh, than me. But because it's literally only right next to, I I don't know. Um, but I do look for a second. What are you doing, Ty? Are you just lost in thought? Um, I am... Um going to need you to roll an insight all right can do <laughs> 14 i'm just relaxing okay uh then i will put the uh put the cloak on okay. you go to put the cloak on mm-hmm pretty comfortable it's a little warm there's it's double lined so um it does have mm -hmm. uh it does have some warmth to it there is still the smell of tenno on it uh which is really uh either a blessing or a curse depending uh but uh it does remind you of tenno as you do put it on uh there is you are struck with uh a bit of um unease i think as it happens but besides the uh the emotional discomfort it is a rather comfortable cloak um the the black strings or the black ropes that are on the inside of the cape uh, actually can be uh formed around in these inner loops uh, much like um belt loops but in the inside so you can draw and uh, close it and the outer layer will uh, just sit um over uh the uh, over the ropes, the bristles of the ropes are a little, they do feel a little stiff, uh, much like, um, like, unlike soft rope, like the rest of it is, the bristles of it feel like a bristles of uh, a broom. They do seem to be quill-like in uh, some sort of, uh, in, in some sort of feature as you uh, tie it around. And as you do, nothing really seems any different. Um, but as you do tighten it, uh, I think that is when, uh, Jet, you notice that it starts, she starts to <laughs> phase sort of and glitch sort of in and out as, um, the, it does seem to be working as the okay. displacement is starting to shift your perception of where she may be standing. Uh, look down to where you are right now. I does do she so? see where she is or does she see where she should be? She sees where she is. Okay. okay. 
Um, I'm going to try and just, I don't know, um, cautiously go up to her and try and poke on the, uh, the, the forehead? I don't know. It is difficult, but as, like, you get closer and you go to reach, um, the, the glitching, like, um, sort of, uh, reality that seems to, uh, display from your perception of her starts with... And, like, as you get closer, it seems to be more random and erratic. And as you reach out, it, you do miss for a second, but then you do find purchase. And as you do, it stops as your hand is on her. And then when you take it off, it starts to then flicker and things again. Almost as if it's your perception that it's affecting. Uh, uh -huh. And once you have your hand on it, it, you can't be fooled. But once your hand uh -huh. is off, your perception starts to then get danced around again. Okay, um, and enjoy. <laughs> I'm going to sit back down and try and get my breath because that was kind of fucky. Yeah, it's it's definitely <laughs> weird. Um, you do notice, okay. uh, Varsha, when you untie it, it does mm -hmm. stop the effect. So like, uh, when it's tied okay. around your waist, you could like tie it for battle, and then it, it would <laughs> happen, or you can, but I uh, can... keep it okay. just hanging, and it won't do that. All right, then I leave it just hanging. Then at this point, okay. And yeah, I think you both, after some moments, figure that out, and of course, yeah. Okay. There was one other thing, yes? This is yes, how you get the your players addicted to identifying the... items. <laughs> yep, yeah, no kidding. Um, yes, it was in the pocket of the cloak, right? Yes. Yes. So yeah, okay. I'll take it out and hand it to you. You pull out a stick that looks to be hewn from a uh, different stone. Um... The, it's layered uh, on the handle, and then it's also been cut and hewn. So there looks like there's a uh, jade, like a, a small, thin jade, um, ivory, and also uh, amethyst. And of course, the uh, the jade and the amethyst will go really well with their contrast, but separated by the the white uh, ivory. And this is cut into the handle, hewn, and then a. Uh, the point of this stick does get elongated, and it looks like there are three um, tendrils that are chasing up toward the stick and towards the point of the stick. And uh, I will let you know what that is if you are going to identify it. Uh, yes. Okay. I still have the apparatus there. I'll suspend it over and then just dangle it to make it tap onto the... Okay. To the velum, like I did the dagger. Is... this is definitely weird to do. I think I did it. As you uh, start to rub the this arcane soap onto the vellum, you start to then see this um, swelling of the vellum in different places that start to then uh, be these weird, interesting markings, and then you start to decipher what they are. And that is what you Magic see. Magic missile. It's exactly what it is, as you have a... Take uh, I can't have another inspiration, but you do have another uh, wand of magic missile. Okay. Who could use this? Um. So this looks yeah. like it. I guess. Um. It doesn't feel right for me to take it. What is that? It's a it's a wand of. Uh... So you see these tendrils that come off it. If you channel it at something, you can uh, blast <laughs> them with magic energy. Why wouldn't you use it? Uh, I don't know. It it wasn't mine. I didn't know lock in. I know. Uh. 
got ten up. I think it would probably I think it would probably oh, be most up, useful. That's all right. I think it would probably be most useful for you to have it. Kind of like a magical crossbow. Ah, uh, kind of yes. Okay, I'll I'll hold on to it for now. And I pocket it away. I think as you are, as you're identifying these things, um, there are some of the, uh, there are some onlookers. Some of these prisoners are also watching as well. They seem to be in awe uh, as some of the orcs too. They're turning and looking as you were doing this, that they've never seen anything like this before. And I don't know if any of you have ever seen anything like this before. This style of uh, reading um, arcane is just so unique and different when Jet does this sort of magic. Um, but yeah, nevertheless, you continue forward. The day goes by relatively uneventful. Um, the You are making a good amount of noise, so there is a chance that some of the, the wildlife are at least being scared off by you, uh, or uh, the word has traveled through the wood that there is a large uh, convoy or caravan making its way. You do, uh, for the rest of the evening, you do find some food and rations, of course, uh, because you are with the caravan, rations are gonna come easy. Um, so that's not a big deal. But the Jilun does start to uh, set and the Aurora starts to dance into the evening sky, uh, indicating evening here on Hearth as uh, the tone and the lighting sort of darkens a bit, but now in a deeper purple midnight color than uh, it once did when it was that, like, um, that tungsten white light that sort of happens during the day. Uh, the caravan starts to then slow, and uh, they end up stopping. They then start to undo some of the caravan, uh, like some of the horses, let the horses sort of wander and eat, and starting to indicate that they are done traveling for the day. Okay. I will, I will immediately like hop off and start helping because I'm assuming we're, we're setting up camp now. Mm-hmm. Well, I begin to do go through the ritual sure, of doing that. Yeah. I think. And they, yeah. they thank you uh, the best they can mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. as they do that. Uh, Smith, can I get a perception from you? I'll be doing that. Nine. Okay. Uh, so yeah, as you're making your way, trying to sort of, I, I assume you're still sort of doing a scouting around the area and things like that. I think I'm really badly, like, hiding the fact that I'm seeing what Varsha's doing. Mm -hmm. So my mind is sort of occupied while I'm trying to keep an eye out, which is never good. Okay, as as you start to scout around the area, you notice that there is more of this marble stone-like feature. Um, uncertain if you are near the epicenter of whatever this could have, could have been, uh, but you do take note. Ty, what are you doing at this time? As the, the day winds to an end. Mm. I will set the crow pro up. Yeah. So as to watch the road. Okay. Uh the way that we came from. Because I don't trust those brigands to try and, you know, pinch a few things from us in the night. Um and then uh, I will probably, 
I don't think... I don't think I would really do much of a scout of the area, because we're out in the sticks still, right? We're like out in the fucking... Yeah, yeah. It's just, as much as we've been out here and I'm getting used to it, realistically, uh, Ty is a city kid. You know, he's really at home in alleyways and cities and moving between people like Assassin's Creed when he walks into the group of people and then just moves off to the other side and climbs up the side of a building. So out here... Uh, I don't think uh, I've spent much time out in the in the sticks. So while I'll probably do like a scout around, I'm just going to rely on if we come under attack, I'll just kill them all then. Sorry. Yeah. I'll injure them. Uh, and if a creature comes after us, then a creature comes after us. We've got a bunch of people with us who probably know these roads better. They probably know the area better. So really, I'm probably not doing a lot. I probably would yeah, you're at the whim make of a little... Uh, comfortable area but up against this a tree maybe um and pretty much just continue doing what i've been doing on the road every now and then i close my eyes i look through the crow pro literally i've set it up like a cctv camera um and i'll probably just prepare to have a a, a rest you know okay yeah like that is it i'm just probably gonna go to sleep all right <laughs> uh, uh or if everyone's having dinner and stuff i'll just kind of mill around um i i doubt i even help set much up other than my own little area with, yeah uh, there's not much that like you wrong. really could offer in the wilds right i mean you or at least you feel that way right okay so i probably just kind of set up my own pack against the tree and then my own uh bedroll um and then just keep an eye on what everyone's doing um, and just keep an eye for anything that's out of place. I'm I'm slightly aware that there was a, a group of brigands on the road earlier on in the day, and that they might want to follow us. In my head, I'm like, that's what I would do. Like, there's too many of them, but they've still got shit, so maybe I can go and wait for them to settle down for the evening and then sneak in at night and pinch a few things off of some sleeping people or grab right. some stuff off the carriages. Because that's what um, you do. That's what I would do. Um, and when it comes to animals and shit, I don't know what the fuck is out here, so I'll just deal with it when it tries to bite me. Or turn me to stone again or something um and uh yeah i think i probably just relax against a tree okay. sort of half watching but really not probably the same as as smith really it's like just distracted but by my own thoughts and what's going on and not really focused too much on what's happening again there's a lot of us we're not going to hide from anything yeah so. it's hard yeah okay make me a perception 19 again. You notice, um, as you're sort of just scanning around, you notice that Smith has been wandering toward the outside of this, um, of this camp, at least. Uh, the, it's either... I think he keeps checking in as well with Varsha as well as the caravan and the convoy, but you do notice non-verbally, by non the way, yeah, 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 non-verbally as this sort of happens, uh, and uh, but you do notice that Smith has kept his distance for a lot of the way, and now it seems to be now that it's slowed down, he seems to extend his reach a bit more as he's sort of bushwhacking on the outside um, and like slogging through some deep puddles, uh, but still trying his best to at least be security detail um, or stay far from the group. Um, but that is what you were able to pick up as uh, with your 19, as he's not doing a great job for you hiding, um, but it doesn't look like he's hiding at all as if he's just has wandered off and is just either deep in his mind thinking or is checking in with how far he should be away from the convoy. Cool, yeah, I don't really care if Smith gets eaten by something right now. Yeah, that's super fair. Yeah. Smith. Make me an arcana. Twenty-three. As you're walking through, like you're sort of 
as you're sort of taking this time to walk through the the outskirts of this campsite, trying your best to to scout and be security detail like we mentioned, but um, there are times where your mind does start to wander into where are we? What is this place? Um, And you start to think about, is there a site nearby? Is uh, what happened to the dwarves? Uh, I do know a little bit of it. Is the sundering? And you start to just, you start to Anxiety starts to spike in the concern about sights, about dwarves, about the sundering, about where you are. Um, I think at this moment, uh, a lot of... I think a lot of thoughts flood in about how foreign this entire place is for you. So you do your best to try to piece things together. And as you do, you start to read some inscriptions on some rocks nearby, and you start to then piece together where this epicenter of wherever this could be, and you do notice that a a purple wisp starts to then breeze through the air and dances through some of the vegetation. A briar brush Uh, moves for a second, indicating that wind has just tickled its branches. But as it does, it then, the, this lavender gust starts to then lick its way up onto, it looks like a back of a spectral image of some sort of figure, slogging just into the distance uh, as it starts to make its way through, and you see a spectral image of uh, a a shorter humanoid, uh, and as it starts to move brush away, and as it does, the hand does not move through the brush, but it does the actions like it was, the brush still there, unmoving, as it then parts the brush and walks, seemingly walks through it, and as it does, literally walk through the vegetation just out of sight, and it looks like it starts to go up a hill. How far away from us? about 200 feet from camp. But away from camp. But walking away from camp. I don't think that my curiosity outweighs my duty right now. Which is in my head that if people don't trust me but I still have some sort of connection to Varsha and I still have some obligation to her that I need to do my best to protect. I lost audio there for a second. I'm here. Um, I said um, that is something that I'm struggling with. Okay. Um, but ultimately, I think that, um, I think I would stay with the camp and, um, I'd probably walk over to, I think I'd walk over to, um, anyone else that's keeping guard. And I think that does include Ty. Okay. And I would probably, um, just mention what I saw and to keep a keep a good eye out. But I'll um I'll approach Ty probably last. There's something out there. 
some kind of spirit thing. It's moving around. You just lose audio again? Hello? If I can... Hello? Hello, hello? Hello. That was weird. Okay. Um... We saw something out there, some wisp of energy or something. Just keep an eye out. Aye, aye, ghosts. Did you want to go and get it? Don't know anything about this area. We've already set up camp. Don't know if it's leading us into some kind of trap. I'll just tell everyone and watch out, and if anyone starts acting weird or wandering off in the night, well, deal with it then. I nod once and walk away. What are you thinking, Ty? Thinking I fucking hate ghosts. Because you can't eat ghosts. Always hated ghosts. And they don't bleed. Which is fucking annoying. We were dealt with bleeds, a ghost? You can kill it. I think I've dealt with probably a few things like that, yeah. Weird hauntings or like spirit things or things what don't bleed. Anything what don't bleed. Red Devon always used to tell me was a bloody nightmare to deal with believes it can kill it you know what I mean that kind of thing so that's one thing but it does mean that it's even more difficult for me now because I don't really cut things as much you know but I'm trying not to so what can you knock out a ghost so I'm trying to think about ways that I would kill a ghost like getting the fuck off using a stick then I think about Jet because Jet probably be a pretty good ghostbuster and then I look around for Jet oh I am uh, by the caravan just minding my business oh Jet <laughs> uh, yes you know how to deal with ghosts or spirits or wisps or whatever the fuck. With what? Ghosts and things. I don't know. What ain't corporeal. Um. DM. Yes. Would I have any idea if ghosts are real? That is entirely it up to you. So I want to put into your hands if... Ghosts, the undead, non-corporeal, death, death magic. Is, is that something that people within the magical side of the Empire would have any fleeting inf information about? Because I know that we have an entire state called Deadwood, so maybe, I don't know. Or De Dead Grove, sorry. Dead Grove, yeah. The... Mm -hmm. There are always talks of spirits that walk in the night or of course near and around dead grove there's always ghost stories right um, but that's okay. sort of always what it's been in evervale um not many people uh how many people go around and talk about their times going and ghost busting or hunting ghosts or um usually they show up and then they dis they disperse um right but not much there hasn't been many violent acts from undeath in a long time. Okay. So usually I it's just a it's just a ghost story or a or a legend, you know. Right. 
I, um... I turn to Ty and I say, in theory, yes, um, I may have ways if we find a creature not of this plane or not of this life, I may have ways to help you so you can at least attack, you know, so you can land purchase on them. I can uh, look and see if maybe, maybe perhaps I... One of your items? If we're going to fight ghosts? Are we fighting ghosts? I don't know. Smiths or something wandering around out there. Like a wisp or something. Um. Okay. Uh, <laughs> give me one, give me, give, give me, give me one minute. I, I, I think maybe I can find something for you that can allow us to... Ah, let me see. Ah. Okay. Right. Okay. Hold that thought. Give me 30 seconds. I'll be with you. And you see me run, uh, round the corner, almost embarrassed. Um, I throw out a whole bunch of apparatus on the floor. Uh, some, some vials, some bottles. And, uh, I'm just, uh, going through a whole bunch of things, listing off some things. And I'm going round the corner. And uh, I'm just... Uh, I'll be with you in a second, Mr. Ty. I'm just gonna... Uh... It might have just been some weird smoke or something. I say to no one. <laughs> As you try to potentially... reason with what Smith may have seen in your own mind in a, in a, in a, in a haze of denial. Okay. Jed, what is it you're doing behind the cart? Jed? Did you, are we... Did this just happen again? Gosh. Better than buffering. Hello? Mm-hmm. Sorry, uh huh. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was yeah. in there for a really long time. I noticed, and I was like, "Is yeah. he what?" Jed, what are you doing behind the cart? Um. Okay. So I'm just. I, I've got a whole bunch of things here on 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 the floor with me. Um. I'm 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 mixing reagents. I'm making a lot of mess right now. Uh. My my entire every everything is is a mess. This is all uh, purely theory right now. Um. Uh, 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 there's a bit of a. You know, explosions here. <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> and uh, I'm just, uh, I I'm pretty excited because I've never really done this before. Um, I I've, I've got a whole bunch of things, you know, like there's, there's, there's uh, so some spare metal on the floor. There's a stick from uh, my, my apparatus and I'm just, <laughs> I'm, I'm, okay. Um, uh, okay. Um, Mr. Tai? Mr. Tai? Um, you might have to come here, please. I get up and wander around to wherever the hell he is. Okay. All right. Uh, you have... You know what? In fact... No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, one second, one second. Okay, um, just give me one more second and... All right. Um, give me your favorite weapon. I start looking at all of my weapons and and I have what is essentially an existential crisis. Uh, <laughs> They're all and my I, favorite. I, I like pull out one of the sticks and I'm like, that's not my favorite. Then I pull out a dagger and then returning dagger. And then I look at him and then I go for the bow again. Then I look at him again and I... Your favorite... No, what do you mean by favorite? I can't do that. I can't do that. All right. Uh, so if you are to use something to clobber something that does the most damage, which is it? Give it to me. Well, am I trying to kill it? Well, uh, no. Just uh, to hurt it. You know, it's a weapon. It's uh, a weapon. I'm one of the screamer sticks. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm going to... Destroy. Uh, 
<laughs> well, you never know. I'm going to grab a larger vial. Um, in fact, it looks more like a like a jug, almost. And I'm going to put it on the floor. And some of the regions that I have remaining, I'm going to then uh, uh, spill into the, into the jug. Um, so you see this uh, dull yellow, uh, almost like ochre kind of uh, sap substance go inside the jug. I'm going to mix it with something that's teal and then something clear. And the mixture starts to, starts to effervesce. You see some steam uh, going up. Uh, oh, um, don't, don't breathe this. <laughs> and I go at this for a while. And then after I, I am going to take a deep breath and then just blow into the mixture. And I'm going to stop stirring physically. So much has changed in a year, but not everything is as it seems. You're going to have to put your faith in me. Great sacrifices were made in the name of the ruler. Are you familiar with the Theremon, boy? He mused aloud, and although his apprentice was indeed in the room, it seemed almost as if the mage was speaking to himself. The fireplace crackled and snapped, full of fresh logs the boy had practiced on earlier that very day. The mage was sitting at his desk, hunched over some parchment and books, carefully scribing something with ink and quill. It was originally known as the Etherphone, and it's an instrument controlled without physical touch. Two rods sense the position of your hands and control the oscillators for the frequency. Sound is created by finding the perfect relation from your hands to the rods. Now when you learn to play the theremin, they teach you specific hand gestures and finger positions for each note. You technically you don't need these gestures, but it makes it easier to be precise each time. This is the same for somatic and verbal components, or any other tools we use, like your staff there. At this, he lifted his quill slightly, turning to the side to peer at the boy over the rim of his glasses. Do you understand? Good. on the throne.
So much has changed in a year. But not everything is as it seems. You're going to have to put your faith in me. Great sacrifices were made in the name of a ruler whose grip tightens on the throne. He has bullied gangsters, manipulated politicians to consolidate power. Because power is only achieved on the broken backs of those who believe they have no other choice. And this is the way a god will be raised. Because what is more powerful than a god? But some rules still apply to gods. As above, so below. A revolution is coming. And we're back. Sorry about that. I seem to have shocked the stream deck, and that is why everything went crazy. But we're back, and Jet was about to, or Meyer was about to tell us about how and what ritual they were doing. Um, okay. I I, I, I don't know exactly where I left off, but uh, I went behind the caravan to, mm -hmm. uh, to, to work on this thing. I've never done it be so I, I i'm essentially just trying to make sure that everything is going to work correctly as it is i'm doing some experiments uh, i have a bunch of apparatus in front of me uh, some vials uh, some you've seen before that i use for my spells things like firebolt and stuff and they're just laid out on the floor and uh, i i don't know exactly where we were before but after a lot of trial and error a lot of mixing things around you know um, there was a teal I potion and i believe there was also uh some other color that's what yes. i got out of it Right. Uh, uh, okay. So uh, there was there was a teal potion that I poured into uh, into this large vial. Uh, I've mixed it in with something else that looks like yellow ochre, like uh, like yes. like tree sap, but golden amber, and uh, they're all uh, coalescing inside. Uh, and it's at this point I believe I called Mr. Tai over to the side, and um, I was asking him what his favorite weapon was because right now, this is very important at this juncture, that I need him to tell me right now, uh, and he, he needs to give it to me, uh, the item, uh, uh, so I can get it, so I can con do the thing. <laughs> and he passed you the screamer stick. Yeah, I had a small existential crisis and then threw you in a screamer stick. Okay, um, can you describe the screamer stick for me? So what is it made of? What is the texture of the stick? What was it made of, Myth? It yes. was literally a Yep, it, was, it was a piece of it was like a tarp pole. Yeah, it was a. Yeah, just a piece it of was wood. a particular kind of like hardwood from somewhere around Aftoki. Yeah, I think. yeah, it was. Okay. Yeah. Um. So it's a. It's, <laughs> but it is literally just like a, uh, a, a stick that I've, um, poorly, uh, fashioned into. What would be an screamer stick, but it really is just a. Okay. Length of wood. <laughs> Are there mm -hmm. any imperfections in it? Any cracks? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm going to, uh, like I said before, uh, okay, just lay it on the side there for a second. And uh, so I'm going to start stirring the, 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 uh, the concoction in the pot. And you see as this yellow sap mixes with this teal. And as I'm mixing it with the rod, you can see because of how viscous the entire mixture is, it's hard for me to move around and then I, I let go and I just I take a deep breath and I blow into the mixture and as, as it does it continues to stir without any external forces and you start to see as slowly this mixture starts to go from this really thick uh, suspension into this clear almost white solution and as it does I breathe into it again. I asked Mr. Tai, uh, Mr. Tai, um, I, I need you to do me a favor, please. I need you to uh, come here, please. And uh, I know you, you you hate magic or you you don't... It, it's weird with you. You don't have the same stake in the spell wind that Miss Vasha does, but 
I'm going to need you to do me a favor and take a deep breath. Breathe into you where, where your power comes from. And then blow in, into this, uh, in, into the vial. Can you do that? Uh, yeah. Okay. But, uh, it's one of those things you have to... to believe. So... in your own time, and I demonstrate take a deep breath and I blow into the flask uh, I look at him expectantly like, like that alright don't look at me <sighs> okay taking a deep breath I envision what I imagine or what I think my mother looked like and then I blow into the uh, mixture in your mind's eye what color is Ty's energy you know how Violet sorry you know how Vasha when she does anything that involves her power there's a violet almost lilac kind of touch to it let's tie chakra yeah uh so a lot of my spells are, are similar when i do the booming blade spell it's very similar to the way that vasha does it it comes out in a uh in a purple color but i okay. i don't imagine that that would be the same i think that that's just that he's invoking how he's been trained yeah, the same portion of the Spellwind, or he's pulling it from the same place, or in, this, right. in the same way that Varsha uh, summons her spell. Um, uh -huh. I think Ty, uh, it, would, it would be hues of red and yellow, uh, but mostly orange, I would imagine. Okay. Orange. Hmm. So, as you breathe out, you close your eyes and you open them, and as you do, you see this wisp come out of you that looks sort of like how when the spell wind manifests itself, like it does, as you can see here if you're watching. It just come, like, it comes out and uh, it meets the flask. And as it does, when I've been breathing, it's been making the concoction go clockwise, and it's been stirring clockwise. When yours comes to meet it, it comes and it meets anti-clockwise, and you see as this clear solution starts to stop. And when it does, it starts to make this noise as if the rim of the flask is is now being, uh, well, is now resonating. And this white substance, this white fluid now starts to seem to luminous starts to give out light and you see as it almost looks as if it's a lantern but it's like a, a white lantern like a you know, tungsten white light like a, like the dm said before but it's just in this jar and then i'm going to ask ty okay uh place your weapon inside the flask uh, it's it's uh I, I, it's like the most lumbering, not neat, not careful thing ever. I literally just like jam this stick Lazily into the Lazily placed blast. him. Fuck. Yeah. Okay. The second it meets the fluid. I'll need you both there's to a make large... an arcana check. Okay. Oh, fuck. I fucking hate this spell wind. <laughs> Says okay. Ty. Oh, thank God. <laughs> All right. All Go right. ahead. So happens the second it meets the fluid it disappears and like ding 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 the, the uh escrimastic lands inside the flask and then you see the, all those imperfections in the stick you know the cracks from the growth from the weathering 
of this, uh, you know, once branch. They start to glow faintly with this pale white orange light. And then it goes dull. But those cracks, which used to be black, still remain almost as if like it's uh, this bleeding of this like tree sap, orange in color, the same color that came out of Tai when he bl- blew into it. And I uh, take it out and I hand it over to him. And, uh, okay. N- now you can slap a ghost. <laughs> what do you do to it? Um... Mm, I'm not too sure. Oh, wow. All right. Perfect. Uh, I like, I pull the other screamer stick out. Now do that one. Oh. <laughs> I'm afraid I can only do it once. I don't have enough reagents, and uh, quite frankly, it'll take too much out of me to do so. All right. Why'd you make it orange? I fucking hate orange. You um, change the color mm-hmm. of it. You can paint it if you want. Oh, fucking all right. How long is that going to last? Uh, it, it will last until you don't need it anymore. Pretty open-ended. It'll last until we need something else. It'll last until I need to focus on something else. This magic, it's equal parts you, equal parts me, equal parts the reagents we used. All right. Um, well, if you see a ghost, let me know. Okay. So now through this, the striations and the cracks, there are bits of black or bits of orange. What was? Um, it's white, like okay. tree sap. Okay. But you know, like how some people dye their hair two toned. Uh-huh. It's like towards the. It, it kind of goes white to orange, it's like, like a deep an orange, orange like a, out. yeah. Cool. All right. So now that you have this arcane-infused screamer stick. I, can I put it on my uh, my belt, and I don't, and I just go back to the other side of the tree cool. and sit down and carry on and don't even seem to care. Right. So it's not seeping out of the stick, you know, mm-hmm. but it's almost as if now the stick has it's some extra depth to it in those old imperfections where you can almost see into it like it's got a whole dimension to it. And that's where those colors are inside. And they're dull for now. They don't emanate light like the concoction that we worked on just now. I'm like not even looking at it. <sighs> okay, <laughs> I wipe my brow, I collect my stuff and I'm going to sleep. And then you, you are out. Okay. Confusing takes a lot out of you. Okay. I catch up against the tree. Yeah. Purposefully not looking at the stick and wait for a ghost. Make me a perception. I'm going to make it hope. I hope there is one just because of after all that, I just want to see. You see off in the distance, there is some movement. What type of movement? Uh, something is rustling in the distance. Bear, near, bear, near, when you say bear, the distance, bear, you mean bear. within the camp or like um, outside of the camp? Oh, it's outside. Okay, oh. that was terrifying. <laughs> I stubbed my cigarette out on the uh, on the tree. Is uh, is Smith around? Not that you see. Within eye shot of me. All right. Uh, I move around the back of the tree uh, and I attempt to stealthily approach whatever this rustling is. Because this could very well be literally yeah. Smith. Take me a stealth. I'm trying to move through the underbrush. 13. I'm not doing well because I don't do well in the underbrush. Yep. This isn't a cobblestone street or a dock. 
Yeah, you try to silence your footsteps, but silencing your footsteps with ease of weight doesn't quite work on fragile sticks as they <laughs> underneath you because you still need to drop your weight on them. And when you do, they start to snap and crack. Uh, but as you do start to make your way toward this thing in the distance, you start to realize that it is, in fact, just Smith. <laughs> what is he doing? Why is he... What, what, why is it uh, a, a thing that looks like a disturbance? Well, because he was off in the distance of the underbrush. It was nighttime. So as you start to make your way, you do realize that Smith is just there. Um, probably still at some sort of unease, as if looking for something or trying to figure something out. But, Smith. I look at Ty. You do hear Ty he approach. Mm-hmm. You say anything? Nothing new. Could both of you make me perception checks? Actually, could everyone make me perception checks? Jet with a 24. Natural 20. Not that it matters now, but I'm going to roll with disadvantage because I'm... Okay. Feeling like I'm not very... Um, In it. Focused. Okay. Five. Take an inspiration for self-inflicting disadvantage. Um, so yeah, everyone besides Smith. Smith, you're sort of in this puzzle, this unspoken puzzle in the back of your mind, but everybody else, you do notice uh, there is some movement coming f down the road from down as in from the uh, western side toward you. Oh, crow pro. My crow process in that way. Yeah, you uh, you close your eyes and you think about the the raven and uh, you start to see uh, torchlight on the back of large beasts making its way marching toward you. Um, for a couple of moments go by, uh, those who are at the caravan, you start to notice it as well, that there are four large beasts stand about 10 or 15 feet high Holy as shit. they start to then lumber through into the space. There are torches on the back of them and- Do they have trunks? They do. Tusks. They also do have trunks and tusks. Yes. As uh, you start to see these uh, elephants start to then walk, or these mammoth, these, um, what are they, what are they, what are they, uh, not cephalopods, what are they, uh, yeah, cephalopods. Uh, no, that's, those, those are, those are, <laughs> Those are octopedes. Octopedes. So yeah, you make your way. Uh, Octopus elephants. Why not? Oct yeah, that's that's it. They have tentacles, uh, and it, they start to lumber toward uh, east, toward you, um, the same direction that you're going. Uh, and as they get closer, you do notice that there are uh, about three people to the back of each one. Uh, there is uh, a large basket uh, with embers on the back of one of them just sort of smoldering as the wind from up in that height or the breeze starts to uh, tickle the embers and it starts to glow for a moment as <laughs> they start to make their way uh, east from this, uh, from the western way down this road toward you. Where's Varsha right now? Do I see her? You check in the crow pro and you don't see her in sight. Varsha, where are you at this moment? Uh, how much time has passed? It like well into the about like an hour or two since the last time we met with Varsha. Um, 
Um, okay, I think I am, but it's like we're we're done for the day, right? Yeah, so we're yeah. eating and preparing for bed and kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I am probably um, oh, I'm sorry, sitting no, over or, just like or it was probably maybe about only like a half hour since when oh, we okay. started to make camp. Yeah. Okay, so then I am probably somewhere near having just finished uh, helping set up the camp and like the cook site and all that stuff. I'm probably just now like sitting down at, uh, my, uh, my spot, my camp. Okay. I'm braiding my hair and I'm tying it with uh, Tenno's, uh, ribbon. Uh, you're in the camp. Like yeah. In some really obvious place. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm moving over to Varsha immediately then. Varsha. What? Over there, look. Point towards all the lights on the coming towards us. Mm -hmm. And you start to see flickering lights through the mist uh, in the distance. Mist, of course, has started to gather because when Geoloon goes down, you start to get that, that humidity and precipitation. As it does, it starts to hug, and you could see uh, through the fog or through uh, the mist that there is a flickering of some sort of torchlight and also these beasts, which you've already noticed. Yeah, I see them. All right, well, I have a word. I'm going to be um, somewhere over there. And I point towards the other side of the road and start to attempt once again to stealthily move into a position just in case these people are not friendly. All right. I'm, uh, I'm already gone. Okay. I, I was trying to sleep, but I guess with my natural 20, yeah. Uh, you do the, start the to stamp. feel it, I think, more yeah, than... Like an elephant yeah. noise. Yeah. Like in Godzilla, you know, like how the uh, water in the glass starts to shake and you can see the tremors mm -hmm. inside the thing. Maybe perhaps I could see that before. Yeah, with one of your bottles. Going for it then. He yeah. almost went for it. <laughs> I, I have got a mustache. It doesn't work. Um, we need Elspeth. <laughs> oh, that's what you um, So the... Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. There you go. Uh, uh, as, uh, you start to go to sleep and you start to feel it and you open your eyes and you do start to see the rippling on one of your potions nearby uh, and signifies that something big is walking in a pattern uh, as you start to crawl or make your way toward uh, sight of this. You do start to see this uh, procession of elephants. I will remember what they are. Just pack, pack of, pack of derms. Yes. As they start to make their way you okay like i said there's a large brazier or basket on the back that has embers that are yeah. uh glowing every once in a while and there are two or three people that seem to be in these large robes uh that cover most of their uh their face and head as they are making their way uh through or down the uh the the, the road there is one of them with a large ceramic head that uh seems to go up and around their um like up shoulder width as it goes up into a mess of curly hair. The mess of curly hair uh, that is, of course, porcelain uh, does sort of uh, signify a, a red hot ember or as well as a red hot uh, mane of hair as it just sort of dances up toward the crown of this, uh, whatever this may be. Uh, these Do I recognize sort of... them at all, even from like illustrations uh, back home? No. No. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. As, uh, but you do this. The the there is a bit of a scrambling between some of the people from Eftoki and also some of these prisoners, as there is a bit of anxious worry oh. as okay. people start to get a bit uncertain about this. Um, as almost to signify that they've never seen it either. Okay. Um, then I will do my best. I'm like, I don't want to shout so that these people can hear me, but I will kind of walk through camp and just be like, you know, tell everybody re remain calm, like, you know, be ready, mm -hmm. but don't start anything because they might be friendly, right? They might be kind and just passing through. So I just try to steady everybody. And then I wait to see if they, um, stop and, or just pass by. But I don't have my I don't have my hand on my sword or anything like that. I just want to be kind of watching them walk by or go I'm by. I'm going to move somewhere safe but close by to help yeah. if anything happens. <laughs> I will stand very visible <laughs> as like the 
Camp leader. <laughs> oh. The camp leader. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try to give that impression so that they stop and talk to me and or come to me to murder me. Okay. It'll be fine. As you sort of wait for this large uh, procession, uh, pack -a pachyderm procession, procession derms uh, make their way toward you, um, mm -hmm. the they do sort of stop with a halt uh, as they're there. They stop with a, a slowing and then sort of stop near you. And uh, the one with the large ceramic head takes off this uh, large ceramic head and underneath is one that doesn't, doesn't quite match. Um, a very wrinkly uh, sort of visage uh, male, it looks like, with uh, pointed ears, bald, and um, a lot of scars and dappling on the top of his head, as well as uh, shoulders as well. Um, dark eyes signifying some sort of um, some sort of wood elf uh, and some sort of uh, or some sort of elf, at least. And uh, he uh, says, and hello. Hello. Uh, so I know a little bit of Elvish, so I will try to mm. respond. If he is, if he's speaking in common, I'll speak in common. But he if does, he's, he does speak in Elvish to start. Okay, then yes, I will. I will respond okay. back. Uh, I. Sorry to interrupt your rest. We are trying to make our way east. Is that also where we are going? Yes. Okay. Uh, it's no trouble. Hmm. We are looking for a Toki. Is have we passed, or is it just what? Up ahead? No insight check. Why are they fucking looking for Toki? Are they? That sounds like they, it's a war party. Are you kidding me? I would like to. In, can, may I, please? You may, of course, you can. <laughs> okay. Twelve. Good luck, Varsha. <laughs> yeah, they seem to be looking for Toki. Um, the yeah. All right. Uh, he mentions. Uh, we are humble travelers looking to make passage. Is he, does he have storms. any weapons on him? He was wearing like a battle helm, right? A or large was it just ceramic, a decorative? A large ceramic okay. head um, right. that could be seen as a battle helm. It could also be seen as some sort of idol. Yeah. Um, but do they, in the baskets, do they have weapons as well? Not in the baskets, but you do see some of them have clubs, um, and they also seem to have uh, this darkened steel weaponry as well. Okay. It's almost like an unpolished iron. Like, so steel being, of course, brushed, but then yeah. out of the forge, already yeah. sharpened. I guess I'm wondering if they're wearing armor as if they're going into battle or if they look like they're simple travelers. They look like they're humble, simple travelers. They are all cool. robed in uh, a large, uh, large drapery. Um, there is the one with, like I said, that large uh, ceramic head, um, but they are looking to make their way, at least what they say is make their yeah. way to Toki. Yeah, okay. Um, and... Why are you looking for Aftoki, if you don't mind me asking? Well, I mean, no disrespect. Of course, we are looking to try to make passage across the Jade Sea. Soldier I awaits. See. And what's that? <laughs> Soldier. The God of Justice. The garden of justice and light and retribution. You may know them as Solaire. Make me a religion. I am fucking faking it because I know I don't know what this is. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, you grew up in a grew up in a. Yeah, and I'm I doubt they would educate me at all on any other unless it was like. Well, then make me a deception 14. instead of a religion. Okay. But you don't know who Solaire is. 
You may have heard the name. So Ooh, nat he, twenty. Okay, well maybe I feel something. But that's oh, okay. what did still, you ask it me? It doesn't matter. Do? It's deception. Oh, okay. That's fine. Oh, that, deception. It, oh. Doesn't matter. It's still rolled a natural okay. twenty. So okay. It doesn't matter what it is on the dice. Um, okay. Yeah. So uh, you are did Jet? Did you say something? Oh, um, it was a question about the empire. So mm-hmm. because Rolthin is the god king, it's not like there are sanctioned religions. There's only one. Yeah. So Correct. they wouldn't even know any bands, gods, or anything. Right, exactly. Yeah. Everything is okay. Uh, so as you sort of nod in deception, uh, they... Uh, kind of like, oh, of course, how could I forget? So kind of thing. Like, uh, yeah, duh. It's, yeah. Of course it's that time of year that you make your annual pilgrimage, maybe. <laughs> I don't know, right, I'm guessing. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, they, this person then goes, mm, yes. So we will go and visit the lost site, of course, across the sea. Um, and that and is up ahead. Uh, then, I yeah, assume. I will give them directions to Aftohi. I'll be like, it is, uh, you know, you haven't passed it yet. We just came from there. About right. an hour, right? How long were we traveling? Half day? Yeah, that's about half a day. I'll yes, tell them half, a day. half day, yeah. Very well. About half day that way. Wonderful. Well, thank you, and we will be on our way. Um, have a safe journey, mm-hmm. soldier. Yes, thank you. Mm-hmm. Very well, you heard. We must. And you hear the elephants, <laughs> and they start to then, elephant noise, uh, start to then slowly uh, turn around and awkwardly make their way <laughs> back toward. Holy Sheptoki. shit. <laughs> Okay, I probably immediately sit down and sigh a huge uh, sigh of relief because, oh no, oh no. Okay, cool. Battle music, that's great. Anyway, I don't know that. I'm relieved because I think that they are just fucking off in the other direction and hopefully not going to destroy that town. And I will say as such, I think out loud to Jet. Jet, you're nearby. No, I'm alone. You guys left me here alone, Uh, right? No, I was nearby. Okay. Okay, nearby. I was hiding um, in the corner next to you. <clears throat> well, they seemed like they were just traveling. To where? Aftoki. Why? Um, some sort of pilgrim pilgrimage, I think. They'd have to ask somebody here. Did I had we no see idea. any elves in Aftopic? Uh, were they elves, Elvin? DM? Yeah. Did I yeah. recognize? Those, oh. were yep. Those were elves. Yep. Those were elves. Did we seen see before. any of their kind in Aftoki before? I don't know. No, but they are allied. Okay. And the elves uh, will continually bring them like uh, uh, resources and stuff like that. They've got good trade going on between them. So I imagine it's fairly common to see elves, but maybe not these elves, obviously, because these guys freaked out. Oh, okay. Yeah, you've never seen elves like this before. Uh, yeah. Their uh, their wrinkled skin, uh, as well as the pockmarked heads and shoulders uh, under their large billowy robes uh, of like bright earthen colors, um, as well as their very dark, uh, uh, aqu- aqu- like also accompanied with their dark skin. It, and uh, also, not, not haven't seen probably an elephant before either. Which could... Yes. Yeah. Yeah. DM, how did the orcs in the camp react to what just happened? They were, um, the orcs this and that entire time were pretty anxious as well as you were, as if they've never seen these people before. Okay. So hmm. they now know that they're going to have Toki. Correct. Um, no, they don't. Because yes. the, this was an elvish conversation. Oh, that's okay. true. Yeah, okay. Oh, then right. yeah, I will translate it, I guess. I will, okay. you know, summarize what happened. Yeah, they're going to have Toki for something called Sojourn, I think. It's a religious thing. Um, I believe at this point, um, Brother Sykes comes over as well and goes, yeah. Did you all see that? Yes, what was that? I don't know. What was it? Well, um, uh, some sort of elven party of travelers looking for Sojin. 
soldier. So, looking for soldier, soldier, a, so a, a god, soldier, soldier. Hey. Do you do you know it? Uh, yes, uh, uh, soldier is the fallen god once known as Solaire. That's uh, that's Sun that's god. exactly what he said. Right. And and what is that? Uh, well, uh, uh, Gordon, uh, the, the way the hierarchy works between uh, divinity uh, usually goes as such. Um, there are um, uh, god and goddesses who will then compete for each other's spot in the ranks of uh, divinity. Uh, gods can overthrow other gods. Mortals can overthrow gods and become gods themselves. Uh, it is said that uh, Soljin is a fallen god of justice and light, and now uh, serves its life in solitude and eternity in solitude as the goddess, or I'm sorry, the goddess of uh, fire and redemption. And what were you saying that they were going to do? Cross the Jade Sea. Well, that means they are probably going to the holy site where... Uh, that's right, it's... that's right. That's what he said, yeah. Uh, uh, cord the Skybreaker uh, through the uh, Mount Typhus uh, into the sky at the sun, or at least at the sun at the time, and was, of course, uh, what was and overthrew Solaire. Uh, capsizing his entire uh, divine palate into creating the mixture that is what it is he now serves, that uh, force of uh, evil and redemption and fire. It's, uh, it could be quite uh, a dangerous thing, but also if these are people who uh, uh, know uh, their way and what they are doing, then they should be relatively safe if they are not uh, at least held back in any sort of uh, 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 path. I think I just, I raised my hand up without thinking to signal the, that Smith and Ty can come back, uh, but I'm still paying attention to what he's saying. Um, a sight? Uh, yes. Do you, do you know more about this holy site? Uh, uh, not much more than what is told in books. Um, uh, uh, the Skybreaker um, uh, rose up and uh, questioned for an unknowing reason the uh, the god of justice or the goddess of justice at the time and uh, challenged him in a divine conquest and uh, it is said they lifted the mountain of Mount Typhus uh, into the sky and had uh, cast upon uh, the, well, uh, overthrowing the divine being itself, falling into the abyss that is locked under the ground. Have we ever told uh, Mr. Sykes about uh, Site 6? Is there a connection to this? That's what I'm wondering. Site 6? Um... We know of a place in the Empire, or a person, an area, an entity called Site-6. Um, at least that's what the God King called him. Um, when you say the Holy Site, I, I, I just, I, I don't know if there is any connection. Is, is there? Um... Do you know of any it? other holy sites, brother? Yeah, weren't you looking for one, or didn't you come from one, brother, when we found you originally? Uh, I was uh, I was on my way to uh, uh, to Blue Falls, I believe. I don't remember where it was, uh, but I do not. Uh, uh, I uh, and other sites, you say? Um, there are other holy sites, of course, uh, scattered throughout. Hearth, I'm sure. Um, uh, on the spine, I don't, I would assume, yes, but uh, any I know of. Um... What would somebody want with them if 
if, if he's the garden his sights. yes like controlling them the points i am uncertain i've not uh, i've not heard of what it could uh, mean what that uh, but i would assume if it's at all like um uh, the uh, ley lines of uh, the shattered sunder, uh, the shattered world that it is uh, a hearth, then there could be something along those... I, 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 I couldn't quite begin to imagine what you could do. Um, you having control, I'm not entirely certain what you are okay. getting at. You I'm just need trying to understand. Yeah, go ahead. You mentioned challenging gods before. Yeah, that's... Or a mortal becoming a god. Yes. You wouldn't need a sight to do that, would you? No. 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 Okay. Not, not that I've not that I have heard or learned from what I've known. Okay. So they're just going on their way on a pilgrimage, nothing <laughs> we should worry about. Well, I mean, I, it is believed that uh, the uh, Halo Walkers of uh, Soljin try their best to uh, reincarnate, reawaken Soljin back from his uh, eternal chasm like prison into reality, into our plane. So it could be an issue. I, I just looked at Vasha. <laughs> I also look confused because I don't think I believe in this. So I'm just like, what? Um. But that is interesting that they're, get, they're making a pilgrimage to uh, the Ring of Storms. I, well, that's the only thing I would assume that is beyond the Jade Sea. Where's the Jade Sea? Which way am I facing? He faces east. Um, I, okay. I guess I turn him 90 degrees to his right. Yes, to sir. Thank you. The, yes, that's the JC. The north. That, 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 yes, that way. Could have just said north from here. Right, so sorry. It's all right. I, but yes, it's um, just Jade C. Uh, you know, I'm sorry. You would probably have known this anyway without having the silly scene. Uh, Jade Sea is what uh, Evervale is. Evervale is on the coast oh, of the Spine towards okay. the Jade Sea. So All across right, okay. uh, across the Jade Sea, there is uh, something known as the Ring of Storms, uh, also known as Horde's Fist, which has been named by uh, which has been named by Evervale and the Ever Evervalian Empire. Uh, people outside okay. yes. of yes, people outside of the Evervalian Empire would call it the Ring of Storms, which you are starting to pick up on. Um, yeah, okay. But uh, Horde's Fist is what you probably know it as. Is that it's that island uh, just on the map? Uh, right. That over... crazy island with spikes. Yep, that's the one. Okay. Whoa. This one way okay. over here. This one way over. I saw your thing, your marker. Yeah. Okay. Oh boy. All right. Which um, would explain this large crater of a missing mountain. Wow. Okay. No big deal. We did journey. the same shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How are they going um, to get the elephants across to the? <laughs> To that place. I have no idea. Do they look Maybe aquatic? They have... Maybe they have some sort of magic. No, they did not. Okay. Okay. All right. I don't know. I, f I, f I feel weird about it, honestly. I suppose it doesn't really affect us right now or our current goal, our mission. Smith didn't come back. So I'm assuming he's following them. We'll have to wait until they come back and can tell us more. Okay. We still have the use of this stone for the day, just in case, but I wouldn't use it until he needs to. All right. You know. I'm going to go let them know that um, people are headed to Aftoki and maybe I'll send one of them back early. Okay. Yeah. And so that is what I will do. I will head over and I will go speak to... Um, Go speak to them and let them know, like, hey, this they this is what they were saying, and they were heading here, and they seemed okay. 
but do one of you want to like rush back right now yeah. and warn off Toki just in case? So, and then that's what I do. Yeah, I think um, there is some unease as you tell one of these orcs about uh, about their their way toward Eftoki and how they're uh, heading that way. One of them. Um, one of them doesn't break off. I think there's a bit of an argument between two of them, but they end up, one of them ends up staying. Um, so all three caravans still stay where they are. Oh, really? Nobody goes back? Not well, even, okay. I think, I think you would probably discern from the body language that they argue about having a path and a route and how, who yeah, would go okay. back, uh, and beat them there. I don't know if they would be able to beat a caravan, uh, of, elephants there to warn them um okay. with a wagon so it's like it's sort of a how do you pass by them without so there is like the, there's a little bit of a, uh, a an argument but there are a discussion and a debate about what they should do but they all end up staying where they are all right but smith what are you doing i am invisible yes, and i are. am trailing these elephants and I am investigating I am looking to see if, if to the best of my ability um, they mean harm I don't speak elvish so I didn't understand whatever that conversation was that Varsha had so what I would have done would have been to move around the elephants look at any armaments that they might have look at things from a tactical perspective and try to see if they mean I've took you any harm. It's very rare in my life that people have treated me the way that the people in Aftoki did. Mm. Without fear. Just with gratitude. Something I haven't experienced before. And... I find myself caring. So I am very curious yeah. if they mean any harm. Do you think Smith if knows they this? do. Or is it just out of instinct? They are, they came upon us and they did no harm, but I am skeptical. Always. Okay. okay. So, I would just look to see what kind of threat they are. If yeah. they appear like they would be a major threat to Aftoki. <sighs> I think I wouldn't act immediately, but I would assess as best as I can. Move back to the group. I can be very fast when I want to be, so I'm not worried about them getting out of range. Uh, give me an insight as you are tracking. Also, give me a survival for a stealth. For an investigation? Yeah, yeah, you can give me that. Investigation and a uh, stealth. Okay. Twenty-four on the investigation. Now, I'm invisible. Mm -hmm. Would you say that I have advantage on this stealth check? I would say you have advantage, yes, for sure. All right. So that's the 20, because my armor configuration negates mm -hmm. the disadvantage. Cool. So you, um, easy, as you follow. Um, as you start to trail around and start to orbit the uh, procession that starts to make their way and starts to turn around, and when they did turn around, that awkward, like, uh, movement where they were near the campsite and they the these three elephants started to like lumber by each other you were able to get a good view uh, on their right side as they all sort of did but then you started to track around to their left and to get a good uh, view of what it is they're carrying and what it is that um, they are probably intending with a 24 investigation you notice that they do have a large amount of canvas bags um, there are also large amount of leather satchels as well over draped over 
these uh, these elephants. There are large rugs as well, or large tapestries that are over their, their backs. There is one that has the large basket of coals that, of course, you can smell the uh, the charred wood uh, sort of uh, whip through the air as the gusts uh, blow through. The charred, the, the basket of charred wood uh, is probably th- one of the only few things that throw you off about this entire configuration. Um, it you would assume it to be some sort of uh, some sort of pious action or some sort of icon or idol to uh, whatever they may believe. Um, the large uh, rucksacks around the uh, creature's sides do indicate that it is probably full of rations uh, for a long trek. Um, There are the the last, uh, the last elephant or this last uh, pachyderm has a base uh, sort of built out of shambled wood and gnarled uh, briar branches that uh, are uh, lashed together where some people are sort of sitting and swinging their feet. Um, you do notice some more of these dark-skinned elves, uh, as well as, uh, some, uh, uh, sunburned humanoids and, uh, some, uh, charred, uh, or not charred, like some, um, uh, crisp skin of some sort of, of goblins and things like that. It looks like there is a, a slew of different, um, uh, people on the back of this, uh, on the back of this caravan, but they are on this caravan, but they all share the same sort of wounds, um, being this uh, either very tanned uh, or very uh, sun blistered skin as they sort of make their way uh, up north. Not much shows hostility except yeah. for the obvious large fire a the leader of this this has a large cer- ceramic head of some sort of being that you haven't seen before um and uh but it all looks to the untrained eye looks to be a silhouette of war but you taking this longer look start to notice that this could just be a separate culture making its way north Mm. I imagine that I've seen quite a few people that believe in religions. And oh, you have? Probably, yeah. And you've also dealt with them? Yeah, yeah, I have. So when it comes to seeing icons of ideology uh, and um, different belief systems and different cults, because that's what they've all been to you and have all been told to you. Um, these uh, these false gods and these icons of these different false uh, prophets and gods are all under the same blanket for you. But you do notice that these are all sort of the, the images and what I think Smith would recognize, I think what would also trigger in his mind that this could be an enemy of the crown. I think I take a moment and I probably stop moving. And I would say in my own head, These are the people. These are the people. And I killed. Not the same people. But the same idea behind them. They just wanted to live their lives. Might not agree with them. But I killed them none the same. Mm. 
That's the kind of person I am. Of course, they don't trust me. Why would they? Once they get far enough away where they probably wouldn't notice me, I'm going to drop my invisibility. Face static. Slap. You snap into reality as you shut down your armor's invisibility. The camera hangs over your shoulder as just way up ahead there are three lumbering torch-lit pachyderms as they just crest over a hill into some brush behind a, a rock down the path. Um. Toward Toki. Yeah. I'm gonna start walking back. I'm almost positive Ty would be out here too. I don't think I saw Ty going off. Make a perception. But um. I don't think I would have seen him, but um, imagine he'd be out here somewhere too. He'd almost definitely see me dropping the invisibility, hmm. starting to walk back. Ty, you see. Out of invisibility, Smith, standing tall in the middle of the road, turns and walks back. His eyes start to scan around toward the brush, as if looking for something, but continues moving forward, unnoting, unknowing of who you're aware of. I think I would just, I would take note. I, I, I've probably been following the same thing, yeah. just watching them. I doubt I would have made much of uh, of everything Sense or of as it. much as Smith did. Mm. But uh, if he starts turning back, I probably would give them one last look and then uh, move through the underbrush from wherever I am and and jog up to where he is and uh, catch up and say, well, why are they going back? Some kind of cult or something. If Varsha send them back in, you know they are. No. They don't look like they mean any harm, though. All right. Suppose we'll go back then. You ever wonder why we think so much alike? I'm guessing because they train you to be a killer on one side and they train me to be a killer on the other. You think we're all made the same? Just like we've come out of some sort of forge Probably, yeah. Those of us that are forged. I know you don't trust me. I don't expect you to. I know what I did with 
Penno. You know, it seems extreme. It's the way I was taught. But I need you to understand something. Varsha is my only tether to this world. I would have left a long time ago. If it wasn't for her. I wouldn't hurt her. Yeah, I believe that. I legitimately thought Tenno was a threat, not just to us, not just to any of the plans that we have come up with here, but a threat to the people of Aftoki, a threat to Varsha. So I acted as fast as I could. Yeah, I know exactly what you did. I've done it a thousand times myself. But you're, uh... You don't have to be like a one-man army anymore. You don't have to just go ahead and make choices by yourself. I split us off from the main on top because I trusted you. I trust Jet. I trust Vosh has got weird plans for some other way. You've killed people, I've killed people. Where's it got us? What have we achieved? There's a reason I threw my knives away. I'm using these fucking sticks. You think I'm too far gone? If I thought that those people... If I thought that those people were going to do anything to the people of Aftoki, I would have picked them off one by one. Right. I was out here as well now. You're too far gone in your head. You don't have to be anything. Really. What you've done up to now, that's one thing. What you do tomorrow, that's different, isn't it? Maybe. I'm not saying you're going to fucking absolve yourself of everything. You'll be laying on your fucking deathbed. You're going to feel like shit. Maybe you don't have to fucking kill every single fucking person that gets in your way. Maybe we can figure out some other way around it. My lot want to fucking kill everyone. Your lot want to fucking kill everyone. Has anyone really tried anything else? You know I'm fucking left. Tenno just felt different. I didn't want to put Varsha in that position where she had to make the choice. Yeah. I thought if I did it, she could just be mad at me. I'd rather she be mad at me than... I can take it. There's a lot of people that are mad at me. 
even if it's her. Right, but where do we draw the fucking line now? I don't know. No more blood. She don't want no more blood. Jet, I don't know what the fuck's going on with him, but it seems like he's lost his whole fucking family. My family were fucking burnt up. Do you even have fucking family? Aside from Varsha. I haven't had family for a long time. Right. I don't really remember them. I don't know. I don't know what we're supposed to fucking do. I got this weird feeling that everyone's been doing it wrong. But there's another fucking way through this. It ain't the fucking spell wind. It ain't fucking endlessly fucking cutting people up. Throwing bodies over the side of a fucking boat. If your first answer is just to fucking kill something. Then what hope have you got of changing anything? Or the rest of us. You're just going to create another smith. That's always what I've worried about with Varsha. I was training her to be like me. But somewhere along the way I realized she's different. Look, I, um, neither of us is good at this kind of thing, but, um, I won't burn your eyes out. Thank you. I'm going to extend a hand towards Ty. I look at him while he holds it out for a moment and say, I want to trust you, I do. I got to make sure that you don't fucking turn on me or Jet or go fucking mental on someone else we pick up on the way. People can do I, weird shit. I don't do this often, Ty. I grab his hand, but I don't let it go. And I say, maybe kill is a second option. I'll give it a try. We agree on one thing though. Varsha's is special. I want to listen to what she has to say. Jed's got a future. I don't want to ruin that either. It might be. Both of them want to help people. Then let's support that. say is I'll try. Fair enough. They're gonna need us to keep an eye out.
Well, that we can do, can't we? If nothing else. Yeah. All right, let's get back then. Yeah. Probably a bit worried. Hey, and thank so you, everybody. So good. That was Holy so good. Holy shit. It was thank so you so good. much, Brad Wack. That was awesome. <laughs> yep. What a scene. Thank you so much, buddy. Uh, yeah, so that's been episode 30. That's right, episode 30 of The Spellwind. Yo, uh, that was awesome. A lot of, dropped a lot of things today. Uh, a lot of little lore things, little hooks here and there. Uh, got to see some picked up, got to see some walk away. It was awesome. Uh, so thank you so much for letting me dangle that stuff in front of you and letting me be your DM today. We're going to go around and uh, talk about us and uh, what we're doing here on Table Story and on the internet. We're going to start with Meyer. Meyer. Hello. Uh, my name is Meyer. I played Jet today uh, and I had a lot of fun doing lots of random Jet stuff. <laughs> really good day for Jay. It was so good. Um, it was a lot of fun, like uh, putting together, uh, you know, the whole Escrima enchantment stuff, and also the uh, identification stuff. It's actually really funny. Like um, mm -hmm. when uh, Cord sent uh, on uh, on roll twenty the the scrambled letter. Well, little did he know that for the past two days. Well, I spent twelve hours. Like, no, not twelve. Like I spent eight hours in A and E on my phone, and I had this game, which was literally just like <laughs> word nice. on scrambler. Nice. <laughs> so I was like magic missile uh, displacement. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Already there. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, today was really cool. I, I enjoyed it a lot. I'm looking forward to seeing um, how Ty uses the, uh, you know, like uses the item that I made for him because I'm not going to tell him what it is until like, you know, he needs mm -hmm. to use it or you know, until yeah. it's situational. I hope we find a ghost now. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> I hope so too. Uh -huh. but, uh, but yeah, that, that was me. Today was really cool. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens with our adventure. I mean, I know that, you know, PB doesn't like, uh, you know, travel and stuff, but Oh no. Oh no. What is... Wait. You should still be able to hear me. Oh my god. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, they could all. Why? I'm just disconnected. Okay, and you can't hear. No, you could hear me. Can you hear me? But not them? Oh, this is perfect. What a weird. Oh, wait, I think we're coming back. I'm coming back. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on. No, no, no. We got this. They're, they want to end it, but we're not. Being. No, I'm, I'm waving. Back. Get oh, fucked. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, and oh, hi, oh. everyone. Yeah, that was so was weird. What he's saying there is pooing my bum the whole time. I think they yeah. heard that. Good. Yep. Yeah. That's hilarious because that's what I was saying. I was mouthing. Yeah. Brad yeah. is there probably is talking bum. about poo poo in his bum bum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Or they heard me and then saw all of that. I don't know. It was a weird one. Yeah. Anyway, Meyer, you were saying awesome things. So I was saying how Jet had poo in his bum the entire time, and <laughs> uh, that was it. 
All right. <laughs> I did remember what you were saying until I didn't. And anyway. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. And I'm looking forward to seeing where we go. I think the last thing I said was how, you know, like. Uh, oh, yeah. Maybe hates uh, travel. Yeah. She like hates oh, travel. You mean travel. Too. Yeah, you made you, you made travel pretty pretty cool. I mean, like uh, you know, a lot of stuff was happening. There was ne never, yeah, never Thank any you. like you I know. I also hate travel, so it was hard for yeah. me to be like, okay, here we go traveling. But also, so. I just love how like uh, you know, like uh, when it comes to like the, the identification stuff, like how do I make this interesting while still giving him the the the, the ID? And that, that was that was really fun, Thank really you. cool. Yeah, I mean, the... I wanted to also go along with what you were doing, like you were decoding something, so I wanted mm -hmm. to sort of let you as Meyer decode something. So instead of being like, it does this, I wanted to still let you have something, you know? So it was, it was fun to, I, I really liked it. I didn't, I wanted also to know um, how you liked it. So if we wanted to keep doing mm -hmm. it, we can. Um, but yeah, so that was, that was fun. It was really cool, it was really creative and it gets you to think, you know, and to interpret things in a slightly different way. Right. Even if at the end of the day you will say, oh, actually it's this and you well, get disadvantage. That was also <laughs> what I was, excited about was when you were like this is the like what was the first one the in, inner mist cloak um so the mist lined cape mist lined cape yeah i mm -hmm. was like ooh okay what if what if meyer gives me something else do i just say oh, yes and then create something new yeah, off of it because yes, that would be because ah. that would be fun new. like what what would a mist lined cape would be and i'd be like all right is it a misty step every cape? time you so, fart yeah. while wearing this cape exactly you cast the fog <laughs> cloud spell <laughs> exactly <laughs> On command, and you can do it three times a day. Ah. Half, an hour and a half after every meal. Anyway, so thank you, Meyer. Anything else uh, Anything else we should uh, Otherwise, you can find me at twitch.tv slash Meyer, where I uh, do RP stuff. We do a bit of Star Citizen stuff, but not so much anymore. Um, I'm, like, trying to make I that a Chris YouTube Roberts. thing now and, like, do more, um, you know, do more RP stuff there instead. Uh, however, 317 is coming out. I'm going to try and drag Cord Mythmatic into that. So we can like oh, you know, no. RP out all the new content and stuff, uh, whether he likes it or not. Oh, no. <laughs> Gonna drag you. Um, and uh, otherwise, yeah, twitter.com slash Meyer underscore test. Uh, and that's it. That's me. I, I do stuff. Hell yeah. Thank you, buddy. He does stuff. Speaking of doing stuff, Brad. Hello. I'm doing stuff. Um, I'm not really doing much, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> that was a lie. <laughs> I'm doing nothing. Uh, please um, follow everyone else here. Don't worry about anything that I'm doing. Nothing's happening. Everything's dead in the water. He's playing Hand Lego Star Wars on his channel. Hand handing it immediately over to PB, who has got so much stuff on that she will tell you she can have my part of the shout out. Okay. All right. The allotted time now goes and to... She's got Five minute goes to, to shout out. Speaker and Barry, Pumpkin Barry, please, as you were. Hello, hi. Time is forwarded to you. <laughs> Thank you. Time has been uh, forwarded and passed on. Yep. Uh huh. <laughs> uh, I am Pumpkin Barry, and uh, I think Brad did that because in two weeks, I'm going to be jemmying another show. Jemmying. 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 Another show, and it's got uh, it's got some peeps from this cast in it too, which is exciting. Oh impossible uh-huh and that's tuesdays 4 p.m eastern jimmy 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 it's called king makers it's gonna be great i'm so excited yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's gonna be amazing i'm so and excited i'm pretty We're excited gonna... i'm doing something weird with magic so i think it'll be neat mm -hmm. no way yeah. pb doing something weird yeah not gonna Just... happen no. no way no way i'm very excited that's gonna be sick anything else Thanks. nope that's okay it. that's it come see us on tuesday two weeks Hell yeah. May the 3rd. May the 3rd. Go check out PB's you. channel where she's doing... Judgment. 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 I'm playing a detective and I'm getting really aggressively angry at a beat-em-up game, so... Yeah, perfect. Yeah. If you want to see me get aggressive and beat people up in alleyways, you can do that. <laughs> you can just head to her house, but if you'd like to watch her play video games... Twitch.tv slash pumpkinberry. Whack! Next hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Wax Steven. I played Smith for you today. Thank you so much for being here, as always. Uh, I am designing a TTRPG over on my channel. If you're curious about what that process is like, you should come check it out. It's been really fun. It's been really great. We, we played our... tested it on Saturday. It's awesome. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, PB. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, and, uh, yeah, we, we got to test it. I've had a really fucking rough few weeks, but... Mm. Um, I uh I I I'm very happy that my 
my cat who was lost. Uh, I, I managed to find her. Yes. And, um, yeah, that, that definitely helped. Um, and, uh, we were having a really great time doing the TTRPG and, uh, it's, it's been a really fun process and I'm looking forward to doing our, our first session offline. Sorry, folks. Uh, this weekend Boom. and, um, yeah, I'm very excited, uh, especially for PB's character who she has kept everything in the dark from the rest of the cast. Uh, yeah. Not cast. Well, I didn't. I didn't. Just I, friend group. And I'm sure that I, I didn't might do invite it. somewhere Brad in my did it. spam. <laughs> <laughs> he said friend group. Oh yeah. All right. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, I for oh let me. Yeah. Uh. So anyway. Uh. <laughs> I'm. Anyway, bye. I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm also GMing uh, Myth in Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. Um, you should check that out on Friday. Yeah, nice time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, there's eight fucking people in there already. All right. Nice. Christ. I'm not the one. Now, now there's out. nine. Right. <laughs> that works. What, about, what about Maya, though? <laughs> it's okay. I understand. You know, like, uh, I also understand. Uh, I'm You're just going to go Caldy throw up <laughs> because I can't invite everybody. <laughs> Uh, but I run Rhyme of the Frost Maiden on Fridays at 5 p.m. Eastern. You should come check that out because it's almost near the end. And Myth is in that, and he's hilarious. He butt checked a potion last week. Check it out. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs> I don't on care. Butt chug. Hey, um, so thank you, everybody. This was awesome. And um, I, I, I thank you for watching. Thanks for watching Spellwind. Uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for being my cast. Brad, Meyer, PB, and Wack, you're all awesome. It really means so much. That you're here and we get to play every week. It's an honor um, GMing for you, and it's an honor playing and having you all watch. Thank you, Table Story. Um, this is Spellwind. If you want to check out Spellwind, or if you want to help me and support me as I write Spellwind and the the world that uh, it is in the world of Hearth and everything, you can go to Patreon.com/Spellwind. Um, I want to promise you more content on that, but good God, ADHD is a, is a struggle sometimes. So um, I am trying and to write more. Uh, and usually when I write stuff, it just shows up in game or game happens and then I have written stuff because that's where it usually gets finalized. Um, so yeah, check out uh, patreon.com slash spellwind. Also check out patreon.com slash table story and uh, check us out, support us on all the things. Thank you everybody for having us and, and for your time and watching and everything. And we'll see you all on Friday for Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. Have a good night, everybody. Be well, take care. Bye. 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 Oh, everybody. Bye. Bye.